Hi and welcome. So this time around we have an interesting project. We're making another laser welding fixture and this time it's going to be a rotary fixture uh, which we have done several of except that this one will be a lot closer to a live center. So this is a live center for my lathe with a Morse Taper 4 on the back and you'll notice that there's a fair amount of friction like it doesn't free run and that's because they put a lot of preload on the bearings so there's almost no run out on this even under load and that is a good thing for a live center. However, there will be no load on the end of this particular center uh, because it is just rotating apart uh, for laser welding. So in the back of it here, we'll have a Morse Taper 2 shaft that's threaded. This will screw in the back here. And this part will contain two angular contact bearings that aren't going to be heavily preloaded, unlike this. Uh, these are actually ABIC 7 uh, taper bearings, but they, they run really smoothly. And uh, they're just ones I happen to have. They're thrust bearings, uh, metric, so we'll adapt to that, no problem. Uh, a couple things here. Uh, the shaft that goes down the middle, so there's two bearings here. There's a spacer in between the bearings. There'll be a nut to pull up against the bearing on the inside. The outer bearings will be held captive by the outer shell. I noticed that this was all going to be custom threads, but then I realized this is very close to 5 8 No reason to make uh, custom threads here uh, when it's not necessary. So we're going to make these 5 8 18 threads. And so we'll reduce this diameter here and reduce this diameter. That doesn't affect anything because that just holds the nut that preloads the bearings. So that's not a problem. We're still going to end up doing threads for the cap on the outer shell. So here's the outer shell. Those threads will have to be custom as will the nut that uh, contains all the uh, guts on the inside will also have to be custom threads. That part will press on the outside bearings. There's no preload there. The preload is all on the inside with the small nut. And so I found it's going to be easier to use a common size tap to do this and die rather than, uh, you know, machine the threads on the lathe. We'll see how that works out. If it doesn't work out, we can always do it the other way. We're going to start simple. We're going to start with the nut, and uh, that should be pretty straightforward. This is a one and a quarter inch stock, so we're going to take this down to about 1.035. It doesn't have to be exact. That's the outside dimension. This is contacting the inner bearing race, so we're just going to reduce the outer diameter. We're going to start with 50 thousandths. Going for a hundred thousandths. One fifty. Next up, we're going to bore out the center. We're going to go to half inch with drills and then do the rest with the boring bar. By the way, in case you're wondering, this is 303 stainless. It's what I had in the stock. I think it should be fine. I don't, even though I'm mixing materials, uh, the main shaft is going to be 1144 stress proof. Uh, I think this will be fine. This might be a bit of a big cut for this. We'll try 25 thousandths. Inside diameters are good for the tap. But we need to remove some outside material here uh, to about an eighth inch so that, that this will press against uh, the race here on the face. So that's where we're heading next. We're going to reduce this so that there's clearance around the threads and it'll just touch the bearing race. That'll be the preload nut. All right, so we've relieved the outer section so that it won't touch the threads, but it will touch the bearing race. All right, so now we're just going to tap the inside of this. Uh, 5 eighths, 18 which is 5 8 fine standard threads. I've got a little piece of brass here to protect from scratching my cross slide. Got the handle sitting here and we will just use uh, just use the chuck. Although I don't need to have it in gear to do that, do I? <laughs> and if it gets kind of tight, I can either put a crescent wrench on one of these guys or I can use the uh, the chuck key. We put threads in, but we didn't have a bottoming tap, and even though the hole went deeper, 
I don't know that the threads continued all the way through, so I'm probably going to have to finish it, you know, uh, do a finishing pass on it. So we're going to we're going to quickly uh, part this guy off. Oops! Once it's in gear. And there we are. Here's the bearing, here's the preload nut, and it'll fit like this, and it'll press, the threads itself will clear, and it'll press just on the outside of the race and preload in this direction, because uh, these are taper bearings, so this side's open and you press in that way. The, uh, the matching bearing goes the other direction. I'm gonna put some flats or some pin uh, uh, holes on here. I haven't decided which. Maybe I'll do the holes for a pin vise so that you can tighten this guy up. It's not going to be under a tremendous amount of force. Uh, and I might end up putting like some Teflon on the threads to just cause put some resistance in there. Haven't actually figured that far out. Another thing I could do is I could slit this guy in half and put a tiny set screw in here. When you split, when you press the split apart, it'll pull the threads apart. So that's another option. We'll see uh, how much... Uh, this thing wants to, to loosen itself, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Next up, we're gonna do the shaft and the support piece on the end. I have made this smaller by about an inch. I don't need this much material sticking off. I also don't need anywhere this large a diameter it was 2.153. Um, one and a half will be plenty. That'll give me quarter inch thick sides, uh, plenty of room for a set screw, uh, and it'll drop the weight down. So no reason not to. So we're gonna take this down across the board to one and a half because everything else will actually be smaller. So we're gonna reduce the diameter down to one and a half. And as long as we're at it, we might as well take some pretty big bites and see how that works out. So I can go as far as I want because this diameter, the smallest it's gonna get is one and a half and that'll still be much larger than the other side's gonna be. So we're just gonna take this right on down over here and it'll save us some work on the other side. So let's start with 14 thousandths of revolution, 100 thousandths depth of cut. I can hear load a little bit, but it's doing it. Let's uh, slow the RPM down one notch. That was 680 RPM. We're going to go to 440 and we'll do another, let's do 150 thousandths this time. As long as we're pushing things, let's try 200 thousandths. Change my mind on the diameter again. We're gonna go for 1.75. I can always reduce it later. So we're taking off 36 thousandths. I was getting some great chips out of that at almost quarter inch, 14 thousandths of revolution feed on that. Check out some of those chips. They're still really hot though. Ouch. Now they're on the other side. Let's try quarter inch aside, or rather an eighth an inch side, quarter inch total material removal. That's a big bite. working pretty well. All right, so we got a live center loaded in here. Figure we'll try another quarter inch depth of cut. We need a lot of material to come off of here, so can we pull off another quarter inch of material? Looking good. Chips are coming off blue. This probably would be a good uh, time for coolant. I just don't have any. And the part's not getting too hot, which is a good sign. That means that the heat's actually coming off in the chips, which is what you want. 
200 thousandths. Right now I'm working on the, the tail threads. I left it a thousandth large. Here's the sad bit. I left it a thousandth large, the bearing race, and I was gonna sand it to size. And it's already loose on the bearings, which means the bearings are actually larger inner diameter than the specs say they should be. I'm not quite sure why that is, especially for supposedly ABIC, ABIC 7 bearings, but they're mil, military bearings, so maybe the military had a different design in mind for those. I don't know. I might be remaking this shaft. So now we're using a die to thread the tailstock piece. We're starting with the side that has the starting threads on it. Now we're going to flip it around backwards and try and get the threads as far up as we can. Now we get the die started backwards. So we're going to put a relief behind the threads. And on there should thread this guy, which it does. And it uh, goes in pretty deep, which is good because it should sit out about here. These threads are kind of loose. I might actually have to single point these, remake the whole thing, this whole thing and single point them. Either that or split this with a slitting saw and put a set screw in it so you can separate the threads to make it tight. That's another option for preloading and having the nut not move. All right, well, we're at a good stopping point here. I'm disappointed that the bearings, I think there is like a thousandth undersized and I left it a thousandth oversized. So I'm really disappointed in that too.